Minecraft water is not normal. This single liquid block consists of many mechanics that defy the laws of physics. So to explain these crazy Minecraft mechanics, I'm going to jump out of this plane. As you can see, we are currently falling from a height of 10,000 blocks, and we can work out from this function that our terminal velocity is 78.4 meters per second. Now what this means is that we are going to hit the ground at a speed of 282 kilometers per hour, which means that on impact we are going to survive. Okay, so it turns out that when we fall into water, we lose all our downward momentum. Now that's really weird, but it gets weirder. In Minecraft, you can give yourself the levitation effect, which allows you to float upwards. But if you come into contact with water, the effect stops working. Essentially, water can eliminate your downward and upward momentum. This single block must have some extreme physical properties in order to explain this. But let's save the physics for later in the video. We still have some more mechanics to explore. Let me ask you a question. What is the single best storage item in Minecraft? Maybe it's the shulker box, because it can store 27 stacks of items, which is exactly 1,728 items in total. Or maybe it's the chest, because you can store 27 shulker boxes inside, and that means you can store over 46,000 items in total. Now, what if I told you there was a block which contains an infinite number of items, and all you need is a block of water and a fishing rod? Yep, you heard me. Minecraft water blocks technically have infinite item capacity because you can infinitely fish items from a single block without the water ever depleting in resources. But let's be real, you probably think this is a terrible storage block because you cannot actually put any items inside. And also, not every item in Minecraft can be obtained from fishing. However, we can still appreciate the fact that this single block of water contains an infinite number of items. And one of those items is the water bottle. Now, if you didn't know, three water bottles can be used to create a single block of water. It involves using a cauldron, which is something I don't want to talk about just yet because it'll make you really confused. But anyways, if we fish for an infinite number of water bottles, that means a single block of water contains an infinite amount of water. Well, this is to be expected. Whenever you start dealing with infinity, you are guaranteed to find some interesting results. In fact, this brings us to the next gameplay mechanic that we can talk about. Minecraft water is an infinite resource. Let me demonstrate this. We currently have two water blocks that are horizontally adjacent to an empty space. If we allow for the water to flow into this space, it creates a new block of water. I'm pretty sure we just violated some fundamental laws of physics, but let's keep going. There is actually another way to generate infinite water, and that's by using a block of water, a glass bottle, and a cauldron. First, you fill up your bottle from the water source block. Then, you empty the water bottle into a cauldron. Repeat these steps two more times, and you will have a full cauldron. Now, you can take the water out of the cauldron and place it down. Now congratulations, you just made a block of water. I think by this point you already understand that Minecraft water has some strange gameplay mechanics. But we're not done yet. Let's take a solid gold block, which is one cubic meter in volume. A gold block of this volume is estimated to weigh 19,320 kilograms. Now let's fill an entire shulker box with 1,728 gold blocks, giving us a total mass of 33.3 million kilograms kilograms in a single block. That is absolutely insane. It is basically the heaviest possible object in survival Minecraft. So what happens if we throw it into water? Well, it actually floats. Now, if an object with a mass of 33 million kilograms can float on top of a liquid surface, then this liquid must have an extremely high density. And I got really curious, so I spent a full week trying to learn fluid dynamics to determine the unknown mass density of Minecraft water. And long story short, it's complicated. First of all, the buoyancy of an item in water is constantly changing. At no point is the item neutrally buoyant, making it extremely difficult to calculate the water density. Secondly, we can actually drop multiple items in the same exact position on the water's surface, increasing the overall mass of the floating entity. In theory, we could add an infinite amount of mass on top of the water's surface, and we would still not see the stack of items sink to the bottom. And let me just say that I'm not even surprised because of course Minecraft water has infinite density. We've seen some ridiculous mechanics so far, but okay, let, let's go back to something a little bit more simple. Flowing water. 
Okay, Minecraft water can flow outward from a single block, maxing out at a distance of seven blocks from the center. But by taking advantage of elevation, we can make a single block of water flow to incredible distances. This alone is a simple mechanic, but let's combine it with another gameplay mechanic, farming. Whenever you want to grow some crops, you need to make sure your farmland is sufficiently hydrated. And there are some related mechanics which allows water blocks to hydrate farmland, as long as it's within range. Now, here's the question. How many blocks of soil can we hydrate using a single block of water? Well, if we take advantage of this outward flow mechanic, we can hydrate thousands and thousands of farmland blocks with a single block of water. I actually did the math and created a formula which can determine how many blocks you can hydrate given the number of layers that the farm is built on. Now, this formula only relates to this design right here. It was the most efficient one I could come up with and it was very simple to model. For the first layer, we can hydrate 128 blocks. If we add a second layer, we can hydrate 400 blocks in total. Now, if we were to build a farm that extended from the bottom of the world to the max build limit, we can hydrate 10.6 million blocks of farmland using a single block of water. So that's pretty cool. We could theoretically end world hunger using a single block of water and about 10 million seeds. Now, I did say before that we'd talk about the cauldron, and honestly, it has some of the most incredible features regarding Minecraft water. You definitely want to see it. But before we talk about that, I need to show you a very scary Minecraft mechanic. As you can see here, we have a single block of water that is in no way connected to this piece of farmland over here. Now, if we were to speed up time a little bit, we notice that this block has become hydrated even though it is physically impossible for the water to send over moisture to the soil. I honestly have no idea how to explain this. And okay, we get it. Minecraft water is completely broken. But what if we used a cauldron to store the water? Will we get some even more disturbing properties than what we've already seen? Actually, no. If we put the water in a cauldron, it loses all the fundamental properties we just spent the entire video learning about. First of all, water actually becomes finite, as long as it's inside the cauldron. If we were to restrict ourselves to only using cauldrons, we cannot create any new water blocks out of thin air. It also cannot absorb your momentum anymore, so if you fell into it at terminal velocity, you would just die. Now, how do we solve the infinite item problem we get from fishing? Well, it's simple. You just cannot fish inside a cauldron anymore. It's actually amazing. We now have a fluid that obeys the laws of physics. Well, I wish it were that simple. Cauldron water is almost completely opposite to water blocks. Even some properties which actually made sense stopped working. For example, if you take a cauldron with water to a frozen climate, the water doesn't freeze. If you take the water cauldron to the never, it doesn't evaporate. So it seems that a cauldron with water is a perfectly isolated thermodynamic system. Okay, what the hell does that mean? Well, essentially, an isolated system does not exchange energy or matter with its surroundings. No matter where we put the cauldron, the water is not affected by the surrounding temperature. And unlucky for us, there is not a single perfectly isolated system in our entire universe. It is only a theoretical concept. So, no matter what we do, it always seems that this block of water ends up breaking the universe. And honestly, I think that's one of the amazing things about Minecraft. It isn't bound to our laws of reality. It's fun to compare Minecraft to the real world and to see where the similarities end, but it doesn't matter. People play video games in order to escape reality and become immersed in a completely different world. And it has taken years of development for Minecraft to reach this point. Now, if you want to see me break down the history of Minecraft development, you can click this video on the screen. I know it might not seem like a serious video from the thumbnail, but if you made it to the end of this video, then you'll definitely enjoy the next one. My name is Fizzy, and thank you for watching.